was in their system, you'd be registered as your trust. And of course, if you incur costs, you pay for them. But I'm going to spend more time on this, but they have spinned it round to us saying you've got a choice. None. We can turn that round on them and we will because they're the ones in dishonour, not us. Right. So I know it's a long-winded answer, but the, the remedy that people hope in A for V, which has unfortunately been done very badly, the concept will be perfected under set-off in what we are pursuing. I don't want anyone to be in a state of distress because they say, no, we won't register the EIN, no, we won't give you a bank account, but at the same time, we won't stop pursuing you on all these bills. Well, it's just bloody-mindedness, and, and I'll show you what the set-off will do. All right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, all right. Back to uh, guest nine. If you'll uh, let us know your first name, that would be great. Guest uh, nine, you have a Jeff? question? Jeff? Yes. Uh, good evening, Frank. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Would it be all right if I give you a quick rundown of my current situation and followed up by a few questions? Yeah, if you can do it briefly, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, a few months ago, my home was raided for growing cannabis, and yep. uh, I had uh, legally res registered guns in my home, and yep. um, they removed my children from the home, saying that they yep. were, uh, you know, in a bad situation because of it. And I'm yep. going through two court cases right now. I'm being charged with felony firearm and child neglect with two separate court issues. Okay. Yep. I started the process with the family court before it was posted on or suggested on one heaven not to do that process with them. Um, okay. I'm on step three right now. Should I keep going or should I stop? Yes. And... No, me? no, look, um, the, the, it's just about perfecting. You see, I, I'm, I, none of these are supposed to be blunt tools that you sort of use as generic. I mean, it's not like, you know, we're producing some chemical and says it cleans, it washes and it shines. If we're really trying to be forensic here. Uh, and, and what we've discovered is that in terms of getting off the slave rolls, you should go to the keeper of the rolls. Okay. So I, I have five, five of them ready to go out tomorrow, the LBRs okay. and EDPs. All right. So, yeah, so, so far away with that. Um, and what we are doing going is, with is, the family court too? Sorry about yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, because you are in a situation where you have immediate pressing matters, and what the court process will do is it will alert them to the fact that you are... Um, filing a claim of right, a claim of divine right, and you are pursuing that. Now, through their ignorance, their arrogance, and, and just their meanness, they'll probably, uh, well, firstly, they'll be concerned by it, but secondly, they will, it will cause some pause. Will it stop them? No. The evidence we're showing is that, that the level of incompetence in their system is, is at a, an all-time high. But what we are doing is following up with everything we're doing to try and help you. And part of that is how you conduct yourself when you are forced to go into the court process. Yeah? Okay. Um, actually, uh, the last two court dates I never showed at all. But I did well, do it's, the it's, first this is why. All right. This is, this is why you must redress that and regain the, the honour. Now, that may involve the whole arresting process, which it probably will. Okay. Um, but, you, but you need to read... And before you launch into any of that, you need to read and take some time to read what the whole reason behind honour is and certainly feel be in a position where you at least are in a competent state to understand how to conduct yourself uh, in the court process. So it sounds like you've got a few things there. Um, uh, if, feel free to email me. But given the nature of this forum, there's probably not a lot more I can say to you other than, uh, you know, we'll do everything we can to help you, okay? Okay. And also, tomorrow when I do the EDP process with the vital statistics, can I put yep. all five in one envelope or should it be separate envelope for each? No, no, no. I, I, well, firstly, for, okay, for, um, firstly, before you, okay, you, you can't change the standing of your children or the relationship that they have established or trying to reduce between you and your children until you change your standing. You have to save yourself first before okay. you can do, deal with the children. So you should not be acting on anything with the children per se until you have perfected your standing. Now you perfect your standing by the time you've issued a dishonour after they don't 
respond to your first deep hole. By that stage, things can start to change, but that you can't be issuing deep holes on behalf of your children when you yourself have not yet changed your standing. And your standing changes when you give notice through a deep hole uh, that you are no longer to be considered a slave. Right? I got gotcha. you. And, and also, right. on, on the court case for the guns, I went uh, Monday and it was adjourned three times. I have not started the EDP process on that. Should I not? Or should I start no, with them? No, and the don't, 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 yeah, just focus on vital statistics and your children's court. And with the firearms, please read what's on the site and in particular how to remain in honour, how to use your um, withdrawing of consent so that... Um, so that you can handle yourself and remain in honour. But don't avoid court dates, and uh, please do some reading. And um, if you get stuck, please write to us, okay? Okay. And also on Monday when I was in court, because one of the conditions of the bail was that I had an attorney, or they weren't going to let me out, uh, I revealed a little bit of my knowledge on, to him Monday on the workings of the court and everything, and what I've learned from your website. And on the way out of the court, he stopped me and said, I hope you're not planning on suing anybody. So obviously your information is accurate. I mean, he, yes, it seemed, is. he seemed pretty scared. So, you know. Well, they should be, they should be scared because and, they've, they've been lying to us. They lie to us. So right. they don't tell us about the trust. They don't tell us any of this. They're lying. But uh, do not be you, – you, your position with an attorney, I, I respect that. Your problem with an attorney is your attorney is not, and based on what you've said, your attorney is not there to help you. Your attorney is there to, um, to demonstrate an incompetence of the law and to get you to accept the liability, whatever that ultimately is. All right? Great. Th thank you for that, Frank. Uh, next question. Uh, do we need to, be, uh, need to belong to Eucadia Society to use the deep pole? Well, everyone is a member of, of One Heaven. So, I mean, uh, there's, two, there's two parts to this. And this is going to come across for some as a bit odd, but let me explain it. No one on this call can argue that the divine creator is incompetent. No one. And if anyone wants to make that allegation, they're not going to get support because it's, it's an absurd concept. Our spirit and our divine trust is created by the divine. And the divine is ultimately the trustee. And our divine trust and the property of our divine trust, being our divine person, is absolutely competent and can never be declared incompetent. But our flesh is an entirely different matter. Now, every one of you anyone who's on the call and listening to the call, everyone is granted a divine trust and a true trust from birth. And the fact that you're here is consent by your divine person to be under the rules of heaven. All we've done is formalize that and brought it to this point. And none of that is in contradiction to any spiritual text. None of it. Because we're not, because Eucadia is merely a, another way of stating unique collective awareness of Dia. What's Dia? Dia is, is, is constructs of uh, meaning, models of meaning. So it's just a fancy way of saying uh, unique collective awareness, all the divine, all God, or Allah, or the great spirit. So it's all the same thing. Uh, you are already a member. Now, if the flesh chooses not to recognize that, which is what's happening with these Roman uh, officials, they are automatically confessing themselves to be incompetent. And it's actually written in the canon law based on competency and consent. These Roman officials are, by matter of fact, declaring themselves incompetent. And it is the basis of that which the default judgments at the end of the year on Judgment Day will take place. So that's the answer to your question. All right? All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, real quick, could you clear up the color of ink that could be that should be used on the deep pole? And one uh, guest has asked, what about laminating the deep pole to make the blood signature secure? 
Yeah, look, laminating is great, but laminating is no requirement. Strong tape is fine, and the only way that the that the blood would be exposed is if someone in the court deliberately tampered with with um, a, a supreme ecclesiastical document, which itself is a crime. So tampering with evidence, tampering with official documents is a crime. Uh, but you know they're probably not. Well, they're not. We know they're not following any of the rules. Uh, laminating is fine. Um, color of the ink. The reason we use black because it's easy. You can use red if you want to. Uh, but the reason we use black, and it doesn't mean that, that it's uh, deficient, is we've put blood on the paper. We've given life to the document. You know, all these colours that they use is, is one of their fancy traditions, but it means nothing when a document itself has spiritual life. So the fact that you put your blood on a deed changes the document, okay? Yes. Thank you, Frank, for answering that and covering that. Uh, it's been the questions that have come up lately. South Texas has another question. Are you there? Yes. Do I understand that there is a Skype group? Um, no, there is no, just so that everyone's clear. And by the way, can I just answer one question that someone typed in? Sure. Um, if someone's on the call and listening to the call and coming on, then there is an element of consent that you're listening to a call, Yes. Uh, but uh, if you're trying to imply with consent, guess 53, that somehow it's unlimited consent, no. But if you're listening to a call uh, and you're being part of it, then you are giving some consent to being a witness. So, all right, I just see that coming in, in bold. Uh, uh, sorry, um, answer your question about Scott. Uh, there was a group that has helped in the formation of Eucadia, being notaries and later called proto-notaries, that have been instrumental in bringing it to this point. Uh, there was a, a decision made to dissolve it, uh, albeit the process was a bit um, hand-fisted in how the, the dissolving process took place. But the dissolving took place because uh, there, was, there was only one way to perfect the deeds and have things issued to you in time, and that is for the spiritual members to assume the roles of trustees until such time that groups of flesh are competent to... Um, assume the roles identified by the deeds. In, in across the board, there is no now overarching group that you say is a Skype group or a, a group of notaries or anyone that is controlling this. There are groups right throughout providing and the urgency in getting the deeds to you and to everyone for your local communities is that that is going to be the groups that from March onwards is going to be the centre. So instead of the focus of Eucadia being at the top, the focus of Eucadia is in reverse. It's at the grassroots. All righty? Okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't identify myself. I'm John from Texas. One other quick question. Uh, back, Brian explained in terms uh, or considering the return address on the envelope containing the EDP uh, yep. that at the top goes the trustee recipient with the 18 digit number then care of and the way I understood him to explain it was brackets and then the address written all in a single line there ending in don, non-domestic is that correct uh, should it have brackets yeah that's that's excellent and what we'll do is we'll I'll, I'll make sure that the addressing of the envelopes is included as an FAQ and also as a step within the EDP, all right? And I'll get Brian to give us those information again to do it. Okay. okay. And one other thing he mentioned, and that is that he said on the reverse of the envelope, on the top right, he also put the number. Is that right? Yes, public and private. Yeah, and I'll, I'll include that in the instructions. Okay, thank you so much. Good on you. Um, Terry, right. thank you. I just... Yeah. Can I? Yeah. I, I'm happy to keep answering questions, and there's still a number of questions. If people are okay to hang on, but I just need literally a minute, if you don't mind, to put the doggies away who are barking. Um, but I'll be literally uh, probably one minute. But I'm only going to probably have another 10 minutes after. But I'll be about uh, 30 seconds uh, per minute. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, on the question regarding getting the green cards back, regarding uh, getting those back without a signature. Uh, unless you've checked on there that you, well, actually, uh, are you, 
I guess the question I have from John would be, are you sending those with the 